Chronic Hoosier joining us now. Chronic, uh, I was talking with Mike DeCourcy earlier. Um, I, I don't want to poke a hole in the balloon of Indiana basketball fans, but there is no path to the NCAA tournament other than winning the Big Ten tournament, which uh, if you're an IU fan, you know what that record is. But <laughs> ironically, they could climb as high as the fifth seed in the Big Ten for the Big Ten tournament, which a week ago, if if I'd have said that, somebody might have slapped me. Yeah, it's wild. There's a there is some would say a lot of parody. Some would say just a boatload of mediocrity uh, in the conference right now. Because while Indiana still has a, a big opportunity to move seed line up, doesn't change the fact you're seven games out of first. Um, you know, never really in contention for it. Um, but also kind of just indicative of of, of how how lackluster the conference has been this year, save for, you know, basically Purdue and, and most of the time Illinois, but not necessarily all the time. So um, it's wild nonetheless. Um, but as, as you were talking with, with uh, Mike about, you know, uh, if that's the only path into the dance, uh, it would certainly behoove them to, uh, to give themselves the, uh, the easiest path possible. And at this point you just got, you know, you've got a bunch of one game tournaments going forward. Uh, with only two regular season games left. After that, there's nothing guaranteed. So um, you, you like to see the uh, the response that, that Woody was able to get out of him here the last two games. This is the, uh, the first winning streak, uh, multiple wins in a row in 2024. Has not been done since uh, they, they rattled off Moorhead State, North Alabama, Kennesaw State. So... Uh, I know a lot of frustration is still bubbling over right now, and I know a lot of folks are not real sure how to feel about this streak, uh, seeing as a lot of, you know, everybody's kind of divided into what camp as far as where they think the direction of the program should be going forward. But, um, you know, with Xavier Johnson back, the Hoosiers are playing some of the better ball we've seen uh, in 2024, and I think most of us would agree it's uh, March is always the best time to be playing your best ball, so... Let's get nuts. Let's see where this thing can go. Uh, you know, most importantly, they've got they've got to win tomorrow night, um, because uh, you know if they proceed to lose out, they would finish the season at sixteen and sixteen, uh, while nit eligible by the skin of their teeth. So, I think there's postseason ball ahead for the Hoosiers uh, after the Big Ten tournament, either way. But uh, you know, you've got a bunch of guys who are maybe starting to figure it out. Um, you know, when you see three point percentages, uh, in excess of 40% free throw, uh, percentages, um, you know, of 82% as they posted against Maryland. Uh, I, I don't know that all the ills have gone away or there's been a magical cure for everything. Uh, but you love to see him address some of the issues that they've struggled with. And, uh, you know, I think Xavier Johnson possibly played some of his best ball of, of this season. Uh, McKenzie and Baco showing, you know, uh, just what potential he truly holds, uh, which is just boundless, honestly. Um, it's uh, it's going to be an interesting close to the season. But, you know, as we've seen far too often this year, that can go, go out the window uh, as soon as the, the, the ball gets tipped tomorrow night. So more than anything, let's let's continue this consistency that they've they've demonstrated here the last week. And uh, why not parlay it and just see how crazy March can get for the Hoosiers? No doubt. I think that uh, was it their best game of the year. I don't know if I can call it their best game of the year, but if not, it was sure one of them. Uh, it was definitely the best closing. Uh, it, it's the thing that I am impressed by is the fact that they are still fighting. With yeah. with everything seeming like it's lost, with a lot, there's a lot of negativity, uh, warranted negativity. Don't don't think that I'm giving everybody a pass because I'm not. Uh, but it would also be easy for uh, some of these guys to pack it in, especially when they had already been accused of that. And it's obviously that's not true. But it's good to see them fight. It's good to see them a road win coming from behind and, and win going away. That's now that's a little impressive. I know it's against Maryland, but Hey, Maryland's not horrible. 
it's they've had some decent wins this year. They're a, they're they're a solid division one basketball team, but um, it's almost too little, too late. And well, it's probably not almost, but the fact that the NIT is is even a conversation now again. Probably a, a week ago, I would have just kind of chuckled at that. Yeah, I, I think a lot of folks were in that camp. Pretty much had, had just written this season off. And uh, as easy as it would be, especially on the road, um, you know, the the run that Maryland closed the, the first half and began the second on, I think Indiana got down um, 16 points on the road. Um, you know, I know Maryland is not the, the world beaters we've seen in years past from them. Uh, but the Xfinity Center is not an easy place to play. It, it just never has been uh, for most of the the teams in the Big Ten. So to see them battle back from that uh, and just strangle the Terps uh, those final ten minutes, uh, just put them in a chokehold and didn't relent. And that you know uh, they they let up a little bit right at the bell uh, after that final media timeout. But uh, you know it, it's one of those things where y- you've just got to wonder. Uh, what could have been had we seen some of that resolve, some of that fight, that cohesiveness? Uh, you know, I felt like the ball was moving really well, um, especially in the second half. Uh, but most importantly, they they were able to lock down on defense and allowed them to close that gap and then just turn around and reverse it on Maryland. And that's been that killer instinct has been woefully missing um, for you know several years now, quite honestly. Uh, Indiana has really struggled to close teams out. So to be able to do that in conference on the road, uh, that's three conference road wins for Indiana. And uh, I, I know there's a lot of disappointment uh, around the season, but that's still no small feat. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm of the camp. You celebrate every win. You especially celebrate the road wins. Uh, you got to have a short-term memory, though, because that doesn't mean squat for the next game. And, uh, you know, I, I think – I think we may be in for a little bit of a treat with Xavier Johnson's swan song here, recognizing the finality of the college career um, and, and just really trying to sap the most out of every minute on the floor. So love to see it continue and, and just love to see how weird this can get. Cause you know, if Indiana could climb to fifth in the big 10 uh, or even six for that matter. I mean, we were, you know, a lot of folks are writing off the possibility of, uh, of avoiding the Wednesday pl- games to begin with. So, uh, things swinging pretty wildly right now. Um, but most importantly, you got a streak and it's something to build on heading into, uh, heading into postseason play here soon. Yeah. Uh, back-to-back wins, something they haven't done for, uh, for, a, a minute and that has to feel good, but they're, they're playing well. And fortunately the schedule lays out for them to where they have a chance to end the season on a very positive note. Uh, is going to Minnesota and winning going to be easy? No, but never is. You're, you're not going to Purdue. Uh, you're not going to Illinois. You're not going to Northwestern. And so I'd rather, if I had my truthers, I'd rather be going to, to Minnesota than, than say any of those other three. But either way, you still have to win the game and then come back home and win a game against a Michigan State team that, I was talking about this earlier. Their their net rankings are unbelievably high, and but if they can, if they lost, uh, uh see who do they play before Indiana because they've got two games left. Um, they've got Northwestern. They oh man, it's at home, but Northwestern is a dangerous, dangerous team. They're looking to bump their tournament seed up. Michigan State could lose out, and. That would be funny, not funny, but if they lost out and ended up what 17 and 15, and Indiana was like, I don't know, 20 and 13, guess who's getting in and guess who's not? Yeah, and you know, let's let's not forget too, this is a gift from the scheduling gods when you get a one play against Michigan State and you don't have to go to Breslin. Uh, it would be a dang shame to waste that opportunity, which would be, you know, quite honestly, uh, by a pretty wide margin, Indiana's best win on the year if they were able to, to uh, close out the regular season Sunday with a win against the Spartans. So um, there's there's still a lot of opportunity ahead for them. And, um, you know, I, I do think no matter what happens uh, come Selection Sunday, just the fact that this team, uh, you know, has positioned themselves to make the NIT, 
I, I know that a lot of folks are quick to point out how low the bar has has fallen. Uh, but let's be honest. You know, this is a team that's got, uh, you know, there's some well-documented flaws, uh, some liabilities. And, uh, you know, quite honestly, the best thing you can do from a coaching standpoint, from a development standpoint, from a program building standpoint, is get more time as a team together. And uh, I, I don't think you can you can discount just how valuable that can be for the subsequent season. Uh, you know, ask Terry Morin what, what NIT bursts can do for your program as you're trying to build something back up. Um, I, I just, especially with the youth that Indiana has right now, uh, I, I think you take every practice. I think you take every game as a gift and, uh, just really try to make the most out of it. Uh, because if these guys are willing to keep fighting, uh, you got to keep feeding them and, and keep trying to grow together. So, uh, not writing off, you know, the big 10 tournament, but at the same time, um, you know, it's basically one game at a time from here on out. You just got to make the most out of it and see where the chips fall. You got to feed the monkey, man. Yeah, you got to shock the monkey. Feed the beast. <laughs>